This is just like the Arctic Circle, only it's Warwickshire and I'm in a large refrigerator. It's precisely minus 40 degrees C in here, which is unpleasantly chilly. So I'm gonna get out. Oh, that's better. This is the home of Land Rover's engineering facility in Gaydon. And the cold weather test is just one of many. The reason I'm here is to find out more about these endurance tests and discover precisely what goes into ensuring the Range Rover Evoque enjoys a lifetime of reliability. Range Rovers really are tested in the Arctic Circle, but before they get there, they have to pass various rig tests here at Gaydon. The guys here are literally trying to break every moving, hinging part by subjecting a lifetime of usage compressed into weeks, not to mention simulating different weather and temperature conditions. Imagine, if you will, taking a car like the Evoque to Death Valley in Arizona, which is pretty much the hottest place where they test cars, parking it and walking away for 21 days. Well, that is precisely what's going on in there. That is a man-made replica of Death Valley. This chamber can get up to 110 degrees C. That's 1,050 watts of power. What that does is to heat the inside and the outside of the car up to the most extreme temperatures that it would ever experience. The idea being, is everything going to cope? Is the car going to expand and contract? Are the plastics going to melt? Are the panel gaps going to be the same? So it's basically accelerating the age of the car. From cold weather to hot weather, dry weather to wet weather, from occupancy safety to a simple repetitive petrol cap filler test, nothing is overlooked and all of it is tested in a facility where all the data can be gathered and stored, all to ensure that this vehicle will be fault free. Join me in part two and find out just why I'm getting so wet. So far here at Gaydon, we've looked at some of the extremes of the temperature scales, but there's another, more common weather phenomenon that's just as problematic to car manufacturers, and Land Rover needs to test rigorously against it, and that's rain. This is the water test facility, because water really is a car's worst enemy. The theory is quite simple. The idea is to keep the inside of the Evoque and the occupants dry and happy, but that means the people outside the Evoque are likely to get drenched. Because above me, there's a rig that can simulate monsoon rain conditions in a matter of minutes. I think I'll probably be okay though, because I've got this anorak on and, and this brolly though. When they're testing, the car will be near four hours. And over four hours, there'll be about 85,000 litres thrown at it, which is like the third an Olympic-sized swimming pool. It's quite a lot. It's actually really wet now, already. I've been in here about 15 seconds. And also, the only thing that's tight is Europe, quite hard. And it tilts as well as rises and drops, so it simulates totally different angles, not just they're being thrown at it from above. Hopefully, it's dry in there. It's not out of here. Believe it or not, there's two guys inside that car right there. And they've got these ultraviolet lights and they're trying to detect any water that might be ingressing into the car. But they're just checking for defective seals or any water getting in through any nooks and crannies at all. And they'll be in there for up to two hours at a time, which must be a little bit strange. The more I walk around this place, the more I begin to realise just how much work goes into ensuring that every part of this car is built to withstand 
a lifetime of abuse. A robot's life is a repetitive life. Imagine 30 years ago, that would have been a bloke doing that. It's a relentless clutch and brake test. Quite attractive legs. This really is an incredible place. Every time I turn a corner, there's something new and interesting. A piece of amazing technology putting another amazing piece of technology through its paces. This is a window rig. The computer's going to make the window go up and down 26,000 times in about eight weeks. I'm not going to be there for that long. Today has more than reinforced the importance of extensive testing. It has shown what Herculean steps Range Rover has gone to to ensure their new little baby is born in fine fettle with every faculty, healthy, strong, durable. Never mind whether an owner wants to drive to Siberia for a winter of twitching or to Surrey to pick up an essential morning coffee. The point is to prove that it can do both and to prove that before it goes anywhere near a spotlit showroom or an owner's driveway, that it works and that it works properly.